Oh, well, how are you doing? Are you well? I'm oh, very well, yeah. Zooming? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of capturing the life of the city, so sure. tell me what you've seen in the last... I've just come from Edom. I just found a lovely shortcut from the uh, North Downs Way. I cut three miles off it. Okay. Beautiful. Ten miles to Edom. Oh. Well worth the Okay, so where did you come, where did you break from the traditional... Um, Almost immediately after the village, actually. Okay. If you look at the route, it's a big looping North Downs Road loop, yeah. and this is lovely way all through woods. Well, three okay. quarters away. And it's all public foot paths. Oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I wonder yeah. why they didn't just direct it that way. Probably because it goes past restaurants and you know okay. uh, avoids people's houses. Right. You know councillors' houses. There's probably all sorts of motivations that we can't sniff out. Right. So where does that bring you in then? Uh, by Simon Langton School. Okay. Which isn't a great approach. No. But it's kind of a secret way in. You know, it's like. The, the margarine's lovely. It has okay. some margarine. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. So, and what, what have you actually seen since you entered the, the, the city itself? Uh, since I entered the city, any, I. Any interesting kind of observations? Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, I heard a kite on the edge of the city. That okay. Was, that was surprising Excellent. for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I buzzed it. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, okay, yeah, well. that would be unusual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, buzzes uh, down here. Uh, what I've seen, uh, to be quite honest, Canterbury. No, it's, it's always, it's always a slight disappointment. Yeah. Um, you know? like, it's getting here is great. It's like striving yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. ideal, Have but you, you reach it. Hilaire Bellock, the old road, where he describes walking here from Winchester. No, I mean, it means I read the road by Bellock. Okay. I haven't read the old road. Well, he, Have you got a copy? Uh, no, I had one in Exeter, and yeah. he describes. Yeah, he, it's wonderful. The, the narrative of him like reconstructing the old Pilgrim's Way, because yeah, back yeah. then it wasn't all signed. He no, no, well, he sort of made it up, really. Yeah. It was his creation. I it? suppose, in a way. I mean, he was kind of claiming that he was, you know, using his, his sort of insights and re yeah. map reading skills and kind of bit of a bit of deduction and guesswork yeah, yeah, yeah. but he gets here and then it's a bit of a downer really so i'm really working on pilgrimage i'm trying to promote pilgrimage we're trying to set up a charity right now it's, it's, it's coming together with some good people to be trustees it will happen mm. but the deal is it can't end at canterbury it's as simple yeah. as that you've got to keep going right canterbury is just a stopping point yeah i mean it was only a pilgrimage site for 350 years i mean it's not like it's always been that or it always will be that it, it was no <coughs> before beckett there was pilgrimage to canterbury okay, there was yeah yeah absolutely okay. absolutely i yeah. mean obviously there'd be people walking here because it was a pivotal well, place to the north downs to way is is you know the north downs yeah it's like undeniable yeah but i mean is. wouldn't you call that pilgrimage or was it just people traveling on foot across the, the land pilgrimage is kind of it's a many. It's got. It's, it's a technique rather than a d definitive meaning right. to it. You know, it's it's, a, it's an outlook. I think. Yeah. A sort of frame you know, of dedication, really. Uh, it just means pair aga through the fields. Oh, know. really? Okay. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. religious connotations have been added on later. Well, yeah, yeah. It's middle age, middle medieval Catholic. La it's a last memory of pilgrimage. Uh, you know I mean? Okay. But we uh, we're working on replacing that last memory with a you know a new paradigm because the church has lost the grip of pilgrimage essentially. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't own it anymore. It hasn't done for a long time, and uh, pil it's, 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 it's really essential. Pilgrimage and music, I think, are the sort of core roots of you know, spirituality, really, or religion at least. You know, mm -hmm. like moving across the earth and expressing your music. Yeah, you know, that's that's what the church is made of. It's what every church is made of, even yeah. in the ones, even where the, that power of music, for example, is made taboo in Islam. There's still forms of that power, the denial of it. Right, otherwise they wouldn't bother, there's no point. Exactly, Why you deny exactly. It? Yeah, and, yeah. and pilgrimage in every world religion is, yeah. is a, a fundamental, cr crucial part. Yeah. And it's just, uh, it's, it's crying out to be revived and written. Canterbury this year has had 50 pilgrims arrive on foot, right. according to the canon in charge. Right, because can you just turn up there and say, I'm a pilgrim and they yeah. register you? Uh, yeah, there's a canon lady who's in charge right. of pilgrimage. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. And San Diego Compostela has 250,000 a year. Right. You know, Mecca, Seven million. Yeah. Kum Mela in Alamabad. He was one hundred and twenty. Well, hang on, million. the seven million at Mecca. They're not exactly walking in, are they? I don't know. I, well, I don't suppose, know. Yeah, I think there is. There is a little. I and mean, there's a, there is a walking. I think when you do your your um, Hajj, there is a component where you walk. Yeah, I don't think you just fly straight into Mecca. No, I think yeah. you have to walk up to a spring. A yeah, and then spring. throw a stone at the devil and yeah, all that. And yeah, stuff like that. Every, everyone does get to kind of move around a bit. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's a journey involved, and I think they still have people who journey there from afar. Right. That is the traditional real Hajj. Yeah. But uh, it's probably motorised transport that's really completed pilgrimage. My, uh, my idea of pilgrimage is that it is an unbroken walk. Okay. That, is, that is the right. basis, the simplicity and the strength of the whole ritual. Yeah, right, okay. You know, you get on the bus and it's over and you start again as soon as you get off the bus. It's a, it's a new pilgrimage then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, because you just get, I mean, I've done it and I know you get into a very particular headspace. And it can be, it can be weeks or it can be just, I mean, my friend Miriam and I got a train down to Shepherd's Well and then just walked back to Canterbury. Yeah, 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 absolutely And it was one just, day. by the time we got here, it was just like, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't take that much to slip back into it.
Um, no, absolutely. But in a curious little footnote or, or postscript to the, the Belloc, he, um, he gets here and he's, he's bummed out by the, the kind of oppressive energy, I suppose, yeah, yeah, he yeah. felt. It's but held, the country's held, isn't it? But yeah. he then goes, he wanders down St Dunstan's and he hears some music coming out of somewhere and he ends up in the back room of a, a tavern yeah. with the, the, you know, like after hours with the, um, bar, the working class, basically, bar staff, yeah, yeah, yeah. listening to what he describes as the latest American records on a, a gramophone, no, a, 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 yeah, a gramophone with a monstrous trumpet. So this would be the equivalent of what these days would be called a fuck off sound system. Yeah, 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 yeah. And these were basically the locals. Yeah, yeah, local bar yeah, staff. Giving it, well, having, 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 a, having it basically yeah, yeah. in the back room. And he thought that was it. He felt like he'd arrived then. That was that was mm. the true life mm. of the city. Mm -hmm. And um, I, that immediately made me think of like free parties I've been to and the kind of characters you see. He describes women dancing. Like, yeah, 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 it's yeah, the same yeah. people. This corner here, yeah. Because uh, I've been doing a bit of local history research. This is where the earliest evidence of any human settlement in the city walls was. St John's Lane and Castle Street. Oh, yeah. Um, here. Yeah. I mean, it I'm sure it's that's just that's just what they've dug up. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, difficult yeah. to dig a city like well, this up. Big um, breeds. I mean, you're talking about city walls within within the city. Yeah. It seems that after the first it's attack on Big Breed, 55 BC, yeah, yeah. people started resettling down here. Well, the Romans. Put the walls up, didn't they? Yeah, but that wasn't until 200. Oh, really? Yeah. That long Romans after? got here in 43, but they didn't need to defend. They had an amphitheatre um, just down there. Do you know about the amphitheatre? There was a, a, a three to five thousand seat amphitheatre. Which is now what is it? What's what's it beneath? Uh, is that where it's the old, old Marlow used to be? Um, yeah, the old Marlow. Just that that corner there, that staggered yeah, yeah. corner of Cart Lane, and that would yeah, be the yeah. dead centre of the front of a okay. semicircular amphitheatre wow. that would have seated more people probably than it would have been in the whole of East Kent at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, God knows what was going on. And then there was a temple precinct that way, wow. which covered a huge chunk of right over to um, yeah, yeah, Stour yeah. Street. So there was a temple precinct and they don't know what was going on in the amphitheatre. I mean, they can assume it was like, you know, entertainment and whatever, but it, it may equally have been something of a, a nature we can't even relate to. I think <laughs> they sort of merged their religion with Everything. Everything. I yeah. mean, yeah, they were digging up. If you look at the archaeological find, I mean, I've just recently been going in the museum and ordering old books and stuff just to try and get a grip on the history of the place. They were digging up little goddess figures, yeah, yeah. you know, in St Dunstan's churchyard that date back to kind of early Roman era. And it seems the locals just mingled their own, you know, deities with the Roman ones. Yeah. And King Ethelbert, before he got baptised, was, was worshipping a whole range of of, of, of gods or whatever you'd call Fables, them yeah. and then um and then even when augustine got here and um imposed christianity there was the cult of the saxon saints which yeah, lasted right until absolutely. the northern conquest absolutely. which was basically just another so i suppose the pilgrimage Swithin was never even probably canonized you know who wasn't Swithin, the biggest saint so, right, so Swithin, right, yeah, yeah. in, in, in it, i mean Europe, all those yeah. cornish saints um you, you know those weird names of praise and earth yeah, yeah, and yeah. neot they're not in the roman canon right. either they're all um, they're all Celtic Christian, uh, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but St Dunstan was the from Glastonbury, mm -hmm. interestingly. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was he was the most beloved saint in England yeah. before Becket. He caught them well enough, isn't it? That's it, nine sixty. Held her. It was in the form of a beautiful woman. He apparently held her nose. In the form of a beautiful woman. Yeah. I never heard that. And he held it all night. Uh, he just held, held onto her nose with a pair of tongs. It might have just uh, been a beautiful woman. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. He was really, thing. really beautiful. Yeah, and really tempted him. And uh, there's a there's a little um statue thing of it in the cathedral precincts that if you've seen it's really awkward it almost looks like he's sticking his staff up the devil's nose <laughs> yeah. but he was no, there, there probably would have been um Getting pilgrimages to, to the uh, the shrine of st. Dun st. st dunstan i figure it's like it's a very very ancient technique you know like um, migration era yeah. ancestral heroes right back right how do we who are the first people to arrive on this land how do they come in you know mm. and then the hunter gatherer routines that save the tribes and which ways did we go when we needed to escape the ice coming in or right. whatsoever, you know, I think it's very ancient indeed, long forgotten. So what's the name of the trust that you're setting up? Well, we're just working on these details actually. Right. Uh, Is this you and Guy or you? Yeah, me and Guy yeah. and Ed will be involved and we've got right. Rupert Sheldrake. Really? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. brilliant, yeah. okay. Well, we're trying to actually focus specifically on the English, what we're calling the English Camino. Right. You know, it's a Spanish word, but everyone in the world knows about yeah. the Camino. The so English Camino is the Winchester County route. It's, it's going to be a circular route, but you can obviously just go Winchester County route, either north downs, but yeah. branching down into the wheels where the N25 comes down, yeah. and then rejoining the north downs a bit later. And then there's the south downs route. Right. So it's, you can go in an entire circle. You can uh, keep going okay. if you want. Right, right. right. Like this, uh, 
the symbol of it is uh, the snail. Okay, yeah, nice. Yeah, with its, I mean, the, the Camino, the Santiago one's the, the scallop shell, isn't it? With all those yeah. roads coming into one place. No, that's the, um, but that's the symbol of St. James, supposedly. Yeah, yeah, that's St. James, yeah. Because there's a myth of him kind of arising from the sea on a big it's scallop very, shell. It's very martial, the whole St. James thing. You know, yeah. It's all about that, that layer of pilgrimage back then, you know, the Catholic thing, the Jerusalem thing, really was em empire, trade, yeah. you know, territorial control. Who's going to know Matamoros, the Moor Slayer? You know, St. James, he saved right. so Europe from the funny colour folk, you know. Uh, okay. And it so it was basically, and yeah. And establishing the Templars and the hospitals, yeah. the espionage networks and the... You know, the Banking networks yeah, and everything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, suddenly the credit thing emerges and the war and the Crusades. You yeah, know, pilgrimage yeah. is mingled with all of that shit. Yeah. And so so you're well trying to re reboot it as yeah, something peaceful and... Yeah, just make it accessible yeah. to sort of non-Christian, no faith or all faith, you know. Yeah. Or, because it, it just, it, you know, I've met people out walking on the Ridgeway and that maybe for the first time, and they're just, you can see something's awakened oh, in yeah. them. Oh, it's so yeah. powerful. Right? Yeah. It, it's never, it never stopped me, but I'm the blessing never went away, you know. In fact, uh, probably Henry VIII's sort of pruning of that bow was the best thing that could have happened, you know. He's getting really pent up. He's oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I used, I, used to, I used to sort of go and look at ruins of abbeys and think, oh, what a brutal and terrible thing to have done, but the more I find out, yeah. Um, it was getting completely out of hand. Oh, we'd, we wouldn't mind a return to the uh, monasteries and abbeys, though, would we? <laughs> you know, there's enough people about who would do well off it, I think. Maybe they wouldn't be such great landowners, wouldn't uh, have such control, but the idea of a... You know, I've, we, I've stayed in a couple of monasteries, and it's all a bit weird, honestly, the whole sort of no women, no sex, and... You know, all the, all the focus on Jesus dying for your sins, mm. and, you know, all that stuff can really confuse people, I think. But the idea of it, just these communities, dual communities, writing and singing and God. Yeah, just there for contemplation. I, yeah, I love the idea of that. I wouldn't yeah. personally, you know, just living in a, in a building with a bunch of men for the rest of my life. No, see. Yeah, and, and believing in, or having to claim to believe things I don't. That's no, the problem. This see. really is bread, body and blood. That yeah, whole yeah. I just, you know, I couldn't go, I'd have to pretend no. to believe that sort of thing. So I, I couldn't do it. But, no. but I, I do, um, you know, when you, when you do meet, like, some genuine Franciscans or whatever, you know, and there is a holiness there. Well, I mean, it could be reinvented, couldn't it? It wouldn't have to follow the whole Christianity no. thing at all. No, like, no. like pilgrimage, it could be reinvented, yeah. but that's a long way down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All we've really got to do to make pilgrimage possible is promote it and make, explain it and tell people what they need to do it. Right. And that's it. Yeah, and let them get on with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is good. This is going to be, if you don't mind, some of, some of the... Um, what you've been talking about might will make its way into my um, next book because right. I'm, I'm writing this curious kind of logarithmic history of the city yeah, yeah, yeah. with decreasing time intervals starting off with huge chunks of time in the kind of pre-human era reducing down to millennia then centuries then yeah, yeah. Year, decades years months and we're approaching the, the terminal point <laughs>